It's time for this month's National Park News Roundup. I'm Jason Epperson coming to you from City of Rock State Park in New Mexico, and it's time to cover the National Park news over the past month. The United States has two new park units. The first is the Blackwell School site in Marfa, Texas, which preserves the history of Texas school districts that established separate elementary schools for Mexican-American children through the practice of de facto segregation. Mexican-Americans first began attending segregated schools in the late 1800s in Texas. The majority of those schools stayed open until the late 1940s when court cases challenged the practice, eventually causing all the Mexican segregated schools to close. This was a few years before Brown versus the Board of Education, which would end school segregation for all children. Today, the Blackwell School consists of the original 1909 Adobe Schoolhouse and a smaller 1927 classroom building known as the Band Hall. The buildings contain photographs, memorabilia, and interpretive panels that feature quotes and stories from students and teachers. The site's currently open to the public with limited hours and services managed by the Blackwell School Alliance, a local nonprofit founded by the Blackwell School alumni to preserve the school. The Alliance will continue to manage the site until the Park Service finalizes the acquisition of the property. The other new unit is the Camp Hale Continental Divide National Monument. The rugged landscape of Camp Hale Continental Divide serves as a testament to a pivotal moment in America's military history, as these peaks and valleys forge the elite soldiers of the famed 10th Mountain Division, the Army's first and only mountain infantry division that helped liberate Europe in World War II. The area lies within the ancestral homelands of the Ute tribes along the Continental Divide in north central Colorado and is treasured for its historical and spiritual significance, stunning geological features, abundant recreation opportunities, and rare wildlife and plants. The area's mountains and valleys also shaped our modern outdoor recreation economy, which today supports millions of American jobs. The 10th Mountain Division played a pivotal role in the European theater of the war by weakening Axis forces from their position in the Italian Alps, thanks to their specialized training acquired at and around Camp Hale. Scaling a 1,500-foot cliff during the night attack, they were able to push back elite units of the Axis forces. At Camp Hale and in the surrounding mountains, soldiers learned winter survival techniques and to snowshoe to climb, and most famously, to ski. After the war, many of these soldiers would return to the area, lending their training and expertise to a burgeoning ski industry. More than 60 ski areas in the United States, including many of Colorado's world-famous ski areas, owe their origin and development to these veterans. The area is also a home and place of significance since time immemorial for indigenous peoples like the Ute tribes, providing food, shelter, and medicine. The Ute tribes were forced by the U.S. government to relinquish this area and much of their ancestral homeland in the mid-1800s. It remains culturally important to the Ute people who return to pray, hold ceremonies, honor their ancestors, hunt, fish, and harvest plants. Camp Hale in the 10-mile range currently serves as the backdrop for some of Colorado's iconic ski resorts and contains well-trafficked hiking and biking trails, including a trail to one of the state's most frequently summited 14,000-foot peaks, Quandry Peak. The monument is on existing public lands within the White River National Forest, where the ecological diversity, abundant wildlife, stunning landscapes, and a plethora of recreation opportunities make it one of the nation's most visited national forests. The Forest Service, not the National Park Service, will manage the new 54,000-acre national monument. This episode of News from the Parks is supported by ParkWolf, the ultimate app for visiting U.S. national parks. With ParkWolf, you can view upcoming places and amenities as you drive through the park, locate the nearest gas, food, bathrooms, and pullover points. ParkWolf's wildlife maps show you the best times and places to see or avoid wildlife, along with a feed of the latest wildlife sightings and photos from the parks. ParkWolf even makes it possible for you to view your live location and direction on official park maps while staying up to date on current MPS alerts and advisories. ParkWolf keeps working even if you lose service. To learn more, download the ParkWolf app for iPhone free from the Apple App Store today. A new study from UC Berkeley has found that Yosemite National Park is much younger than previously believed, with the majority of its impressive features carried out in the past 10 million years. That's a significant discovery as it shaves 40 million years off the oldest estimates. Rivers did the primary shaping in a pre-existing shallow valley, and both rivers and ice have continued to contribute more recently. The new estimate, though imprecise, is the first of its kind to be based on an experimental study of the granite rocks 
in and near Yosemite. This is significant because it's a departure from scientists having to base their understanding off inferences made about what was happening elsewhere in the Sierra Nevada. The Sierra was a mountain range 100 million years ago, volcanoes that might have looked like the Andes today. The question is whether it's just been slowly eroding since then, or if there were periods of uplift. The uplift apparently happened at the same time that earthquake faulting in the eastern Sierra Nevada created an escarpment several kilometers high, causing the western slopes and rivers to incline more sharply and cut into valleys more rapidly. It was legendary naturalist John Muir who first determined that Yosemite Valley was carved by glaciers, but it turns out that was only part of the story. The scientists used a process called helium-4, helium-3 thermochronometry, reconstructing the temperature history of a sample of rock based on the distribution of natural helium-4 in minerals. Because temperature rises as you go further underground, the temperature record can reveal when a rock was exposed through erosion. The experiments showed that even though rock from the higher areas has been close to the surface for approximately 50 million years, bedrock at the bottom of the Tenaya Canyon was only exposed recently. The temperature history of the rock gathered from an area of exposed bedrock at Half Dome's base suggests it was more than a kilometer underground 10 million years ago, and most likely even 5 million years ago. Consequently, this means that a kilometer of rock got eroded over that course of time, making Yosemite much younger than we ever thought it was. Well, out of all the creatures in the animal kingdom, few are more annoying to humans than mosquitoes. Yet, some people contend that they are more prone to mosquito bites than others. People have plenty of theories about why. Is it your blood type? Do you eat too much garlic or bananas? Are mosquitoes more attracted to women and children? There's been very little scientific evidence to support mosquito magnet claims until now. Researchers at Rockefeller University may have discovered why you might be more attractive to a mosquito than your fellow campers. Female mosquitoes are attracted to both the carbon dioxide we exhale and body heat, which is why they're able to hunt down any member of the human species. It's also theorized that our body odor plays a role, and that's exactly what scientists set out to explore. Individual odor variations connected to microorganisms on the skin. They were able to demonstrate that fatty acids emanating from the skin may create a perfume that mosquitoes can't resist. In the three-year study, 64 participants were asked to wear nylon stockings over their forearms for six hours a day. The researchers then took the nylons and placed them into chambers with mosquitoes and observed which nylons the mosquitoes were attracted to, eliminating the factors of a human's breath and body heat from the controlled environment. One study participant was four times more attractive to the mosquitoes than the next most attractive, and an astonishing 100 times more appealing than the least attractive. They then used chemical analysis techniques to identify 50 molecular compounds that were elevated in the nylons the mosquitoes were attracted to. From there, they discovered that mosquito magnets produce certain acids at much higher levels than the less attractive volunteers. Essentially, there's not a whole lot you can do about it, but scientists are using this new information to help determine whether new types of deterrents might work for people who are mosquito magnets. Finally, Grand Canyon National Park reshared a photo on Instagram of a woman hitting a golf ball into the canyon. She apparently also then threw the golf club in. On October 26th, the woman posted a video of the incident on her TikTok page, and the next day, Grand Canyon law enforcement identified, located, and contacted her. Charges and a court appearance are pending. Throwing objects over the rim of the canyon is, of course, illegal, but it can also endanger hikers and wildlife who may be below. Let's try to keep our wild places wild. That's it for this month's National Park News Roundup. We'll see you next time.